they're still gonna go on and be yeah, you know a tier true. two tier one team no matter what what does it mean to atn to beat alliance at atlanta bay that's huge for them that's true now the draft is starting so 10 seconds actually coming up with do they have trick not we will find out in just a bit that's to ban. ban already out and yeah there goes the wisp banned by themselves so they dire team pick and Alliance following the same track as OG did, Bane and Doom, but they've allowed Alternate to get their SF. Except for Invoker. Where's my Nuts Tusk? Jared, oh, wait. <laughs> Where's my Nuts? <laughs> Where's my Nuts Tusk? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's like his signature hero. But I, I, want, I actually want to see if Kebab could run it. Or if, because I don't think Admiral Bulldog runs that at all in the offlane, so. Hmm. Yeah, the weird thing is that it's really good for punishing for the Shadow Fiend, though. Ten Alliance have always had their own. Right now, and it's Five even worse remaining. have your, like, stars. I mean, I really felt like my Nuts. Reserve yeah. Time. Felt like he was doing Nuts. Nuts was amazing, right? And that's one of the big meta heroes. So if they can't run Alchemist, they can't run Meepo, they can't run Tusk, Alliance has left very little ground. Yeah, Nuts kind of played that floating support role where he'd go from, you know, bot to safe lane to top, just controlling the map as much as he could. That, that's a first pick AA. Is it Nature's Prophet? Global Strat, here we go. With an S4 Zeus? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's... Lotus Spectre? Lotus Spectre. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, throw in an Admiral Bulldog. Uh, Nature's Prophet? Yeah. Lone Druid with an Ags. Oh, Radiance. Goodness. There you go. So happy about that. I mean, <laughs> you know, Lone Druids, it's awful to get there. Oh my god, they're actually doing it, you know? Exact. See, I told you. I mean, how do you not pick up Tuscar in the first one, too? I don't know. It's, it's the Alliance Global, man. It's just the Alliance Global. I mean, as Alton, you, you ban Zeus Spectre here, right? <laughs> you don't want to go up against the Global Strat. Well, would, would Alliance really be that gimmicky? It's game though? one. It's game one and best of three in the lower bracket. I I would definitely hope so. Is you actually Zeus No. You could <laughs> You could actually consider banning out the Zeus because you've still got the synergy between like Thunder God's Wrath as well as Wrath of Nature. Uh and then a potential <laughs> Which... I think the Spectre's scarier than the Zeus, honestly. Shuna. Can I get Blitz? Like, I don't want Cap Let's anymore. Out. <laughs> Blitz is a better analyst anyways, so... Damn. <laughs> I wouldn't be talking there. <laughs> it's okay, you can come cast for me, we'll trade spots. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't look like Matt Damon much anymore, though. Like, he's... You, you've, you've changed. I've changed. I've grew out of it. Now I'll just cut my hair short for next time, you know? Then I'll be there. That's it. If you you gotta look at him like you gotta be like born Matt Damon. That's it. Yeah. All right. Back back in the game. Uh, they didn't ban the Zeus. I think Team Alternate want Dazzle here. I mean, once you have the Shadow Fiend with the Mech Dazzle with the heals, this is gonna be very hard even for a global strategy. As long as you don't get hit by the AA Ice Blast, then all the sustain will be there for Team Alternate. Oh. But Alliance that's a good ban too, Juggernaut. To what should Alliance ban? Yeah, I think Alliance should just ban Dezel here. Unless they want to pick it up for themselves. But then you just have these two supports that are just so weak and you can't really And you got Nullflight with no stun, it's... Yeah. yeah. They, they really need a controller to come at us there last year for, uh, like, Alliance's support. And their primary one, they banned remaining. out themselves. The Bane was the hero they went to. And we saw that Wyvern plus Bane yesterday. Of course, Wyvern's still available in the pool as well. Turn to pick. But that still doesn't give you that reliable start at the start. You're still only looking at Curse. So they pick the Wyvern themselves, then? It's... Like, do, do you really want to have, like, one stump between your two supports? And, uh, unless we can count Cold Feet. Well, it worked decently for... <laughs> they picked they picked Nader's profit in the first phase. Okay, so he's just he's just yeah. He'll be giggling for the next five minutes. Damn. Well, I don't know. I guess in a sense where as long as he can get in range, but you're still gonna have the tusk and the spirit breaker kind of charging in. So I think you'd have uh, more troubles with the bat rider. He would just be getting. One raise, two raise, and then he's going to be dead if just a charge comes in. It's really hard. You, 
to just get into this Shadow Fiend's face, even yeah. with the stickies. All you do is start with a magic wand, and, and you're pretty much set. And then you just rush boots. You don't even go for the bottle, and you should be really fine. Like, in a, in a vacuum, I guess Batrider does pretty well until SF's, like, level 5 kind of thing. Like, Batrider can look for the solo kills, but like you said, these two, these two heroes roaming in definitely going to cause issues. So, uh... Alliances tend to ban. You heard it in your ears, boys. Do an ATM. Again. It's this is their this is their hero. They they play Ursa. They specifically play a take. Ten seconds remaining. They were still agility. Five seconds remaining. Reserve Ban the dazzle. Ban the dazzle right now. If if this is alternate, also looking at a, like potential level one Roshan as well, I guess dangerous up against the alliance lineup to do such a thing because Prophet's going to scout it out. But yeah. so being a uh, subpar player in the off lane with Cinderin being better than you and getting a new team, what would you do? Spear Breaker or Tus? It's got to be Snap. Come on, <laughs> come on. What's all right? What's seriously? You just Cap. Go out and nail it. You're Spear Breaker or Tus? Who's in the off lane? <laughs> Who's in the off lane? See, you're thinking now. Yeah, this is why you're not an off lane player. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Alliance. Yeah, you could easily say the same too for like Spirit Breaker. If he gets a fast Shadow Blade and just keeps charging Admiral Bulldog, then it could be quick food just because you get all that attack speed bonus, and he's just not going to see him coming in. So AA is going to be up. I really love the Spirit Breaker pick because AA just wants to stay in lane farm. Nature's Prophet wants to stay in lane farm, and then you can just go anywhere on the map. Ursa being on the dire side, we, we know he's gets free access to the the Roshan, but Alliance here, okay. So instead of your Wind Ranger, we're going to have a scene the Dragonite. I haven't seen this hero too much, but it's very tanky. It's a frontliner. They needed that, and then this will allow Loda to really come in the front, but. Dragonite versus Shadow Fiend is like an awful matchup for him. I'm curious to see why they picked it into Shadow Fiend. Winter Wyvern. Apparition. A at it. They're not gonna match. If Alliance can find those picks, though, converting into towers and actual objectives isn't that difficult. Whereas you look at Team Ultimate, sure they've got lots of lockdown ways of initiating, but actually destroying towers. It's a little more difficult for them. Yeah. Shadow Fiend sustained with mech, and then he's going to have all the souls. That, that kind of adds for the pushing power from Team Alternate. They also have the Roshan advantage. But yeah, as you said, it should still be like, you know, three towers for one trade-off. Alliance should have the, the split push and the pushing advantage. Has ended, so far heading first again. Thanks, so, Zoe, and of course, in uh, typical fashion review, we start the first game of the day with a pause. Can we just you give know? it back to Zoe? We, there's something yep, wrong for going to be 20 minutes now. That, that's a she pause. jinxed so it. We, we can probably continue talking about things for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to happen. As, as you hand it off, I look at the screen and it's like, well, yep, this, so this is happening. Is, then let's talk about, uh, is there any of the drop? Actually... It feels a little risky for Team Alternate, because like, if they don't get the momentum, if the Ursa isn't able to secure Roshan, which you know Bulldog's going to be looking out for with Treants all the time, uh, I'm a little concerned that roster is that their draft is just going to fall off, and they're just going to get outpushed. I'm actually trying to think of a roster. I think Alliance did win the draft. Yeah. I think it's... They've got a heavy armor hero. They have... Okay, kiting against. Well, we're back underway. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a similar story as well. I, I agree. 
the big thing for me is that Alliance, their item dependency just isn't as uh, as high as Team Ultimate. Ultimately, you know, you want the phase blink on Ursa. Yeah. You need your your tusks to actually get into like Arcane's Greaves, right, to give you that sustain. Whereas Alliance, they can rely very heavily on their just alpha damage from like level one spells. They don't need massive amounts of experience. They'd like a level six AA. They are going to get those levels on loader. But just their skill sets themselves are so good in these early engagements. Yeah, ATN definitely need the levels more this game, and they just need to be wary of all the pressure that Admiral Bulldog can put out. You know, we've seen him do a lot of wonky things, courier snipes at level one. So you have to be wary of the the Bulldog. Oh, he's got boots first, treants. Is he scouting out with them yet? Usually we see him sit in the fountain, right, and throw these treants out a couple of times before actually heading to lane. But not this time around. Looks like they're just going to swap out runes, one top for Dire and one bottom for the Radiant, as S4 is prepping himself. But welcome, guys. First game of the day in this best of three lower bracket between Team Alternate and Team Alliance. S4's Dragonite. Something I haven't seen for quite some time, actually. You know, Dragonite in general, we saw a little bit over the past couple of months, but uh, S4 bringing it back as Exotic Deer. He has that god-awful taunt on the Shadow Fiend. It's a tune. Going. It's not Exotic Deer, it's a tune. Oh, man. Listening to that during the Majors, you know, I was, I was going crazy as well. It's probably the other mid lane players. Team Unknown with the macros. But and spamming out the, uh, the good old taunts. But actually, Ake is sitting towards middle lane to give S4 a little bit of a better time, it seems. Robber G9, Spirit Breaker with a bash, level 1. Gonna go in for a couple of hits. And it is gonna be <laughs> S4 who gets bashed up first. And S4, you're gonna be a little bit careful here. There's an Orb of Venom on this Spirit Breaker. They just turn back to fight him up a little bit now as Loda is 1v1 against Nisha's Tusk. Because you do have Kabap actually pulling across in this wave. And Admiral Bulldog, you said he's gonna be doing wonky things. And look what he's doing up at top. He pulls the wave across with one of his treants. And he's pulled this Equilibrium back into a really nice spot at the same time. Oh, he blocked the creep again. Locking it's up that cap. so annoying. Really well played, actually. I mean, if... Flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> it's the TI3 era. Here we go. But yeah, now you can see that, I mean, Tusk is just getting too much in the off lane here for Nisha. And so they have to rotate back down Ake. And this is going to give so much space to S... Or not to S4, Exotic Deer. And this is when it's going to be really hard for S4 to keep up. But I do think S4 is the better skilled a player in this matchup we'll just have to see how it works out he's awfully difficult to kill as well even with these bashes coming out of the spirit breaker it's gonna be a little bit harder to take him down bulldog takes an arctic burn for the face the supreme is up there with the last hits five and one shadow fiend obviously leading the pack a little bit and ellis ash has managed to pull across into the large camp and control this back bulldog tp available there's nowhere really he can move into. You know, Tusk is a difficult kill. Now he's got into level 2, shards, and snowball available. Maybe the Shadow Fiend is where he looks towards. Yeah. S4 has to be careful too, because the Spear Breaker charge, Tusk roam in, and he can easily get taken down just because he might be tanky, but getting ganked by 3, it's... They don't really have that much sustain. They don't have a, like a dazzle on the Alliance side to really stop all this aggression. I mean, most of it's going to have to come in the form of maybe Loda when oh. he gets his call down. Okay, it's Invis. S4 has a stun. He's gone for the 1-1-1 at level 3, and they're looking for this Vortex into Cold Feet. Stun is not there from S4. Gets it at the very end. He's going to get propped in here and just right-click down. Your first flood. You're going to go the way of Alliance. S4 should bottle through. No. The tower hits. No, he's going to get finished off. The final punch out. We'll take him down, Arky. He's going to get slowed by the Orb of Venom. But there's no additional kill for Team Alternate. Yep, really good kill there. Even if S4 dies there, it's completely worth it. Just because he's going to get more EXP and just shutting down the Shadow Fiend, killing off those souls. Now he's down to 8. This is looking really good. Nice and Viz setting up the kill. Otherwise, they don't really have anything to set up the kills on, on Exotic Deer. Maybe into a Sprout, but he has still a Tango to work with. And how often do we see this build from AA, the 110 build? Chilling Touch was you know, the skill at level 1 for him for a long, long time. Yeah, they realize they don't have that many stuns or lockdown. And Dragonite, he has a stun, but you have to be so close. And normally you're never going to be close range against a, a Shadow Fiend here. So going for the slow, if he didn't have that slow to catch back up, that wouldn't have been uh, a first blood. So nice to see this build coming out from Ake right then and there. It was millimeters away for S4 now. Looks like Robert G9 has hit level 3 on the Spirit Breaker, and sure enough, he's been leeching experience mid uh, for the majority of these first four minutes. But he's got two in bash. 
He's actually looking for a charge somewhere. Rotates up the top and he's just trying to find that angle onto Bulldog. He's going to get spotted as he bashes through those little treants and I don't think Bulldog is in too much danger here. He's got his sprouts, his level 2 treants. And should be able to get himself to the safety of that tier 1 tower. As RK, okay, already on a dewarding mission, trying to control his Roche pit very early on. And as we were saying on the panel earlier, that Roshan is going to be incredibly pivotal for Team Alternate and that Ursa. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out when he can start doing it. He doesn't have anything in overpower. Oh, stun coming out. Nisha could be in trouble. He needs a snowball. Oh, no, he doesn't need to. Sells oh, up the last hit, but Ark is there. Final projectile comes Jeez. out of the Ancient Apparition. That, that, was that in Ward Ring? In Vision? Oh my, I'm trying to figure out how they got the Vision over there. Jeez. Magic. It's Ark. You can't question it. He yep. just does. <laughs> but, uh... Probably the last remnants of the cold feet still showing vision. Really nice kill. I'm just really surprised they got it. But yeah, when you see the Ursa in your pub games, he can go Roche level 3. With a, with an early Morbid Mask, he just goes into Roche Pit with uh, Overpower and Fury Swipes. It's like, yep, I can take this easily. But in this laning stage, it's more about building up your key items, phase Morbid, and then into the Blink Dagger as S4 has been charged. With Exotic Deer looking for the triple raise, he's gonna get turned on. There's the cold feet and Bulldog TP's in. The Shadow Fiend's dead already and Robert G9, he's got no way of escaping this. S4 has a DD rune up and the cask comes through from Witch Doctor. Sprout as well onto Ellie Sash and they get two for their troubles. Nothing lost from uh, from Alliance and just look at this, the DD Dragon form. Four heroes mid from nothing. Yeah, this is what you expected. Alliance just keep putting up the pressure, keep putting up the pressure. Ed just goes to Shadow Fiend. He should have raised long raise first, medium raise, and then short raise right when the Spirit Breaker charges in. Then he could have got the kill, but not understanding how many people Alliance brought in, he just easily gets taken down. But they finally have some D push here, and they are going to keep the tower alive for now. Are they really going to go in for this? It looks like it. Robert, oh, cancels his charge. If that was a charge onto S4, they didn't have Arctic Burn, so they would have really needed to have another Bash to reliably kill him there. Well, we're still yet to see this Ursa swing into things. And when you've got a Tusk on your team, that initiation tool, you know, you don't need the Fast Blink Dagger necessarily if you've got that Snowball into someone like the Gyrocopter. But I feel like both Ursa and Gyro fill a similar kind of role when they hit like level 6, level 7. They, ha they have to make movements. They have to actually cause havoc for your enemy team. Yep. Charge mid, but S4 has it in Viz, wisely just runs away. They also have a ward kind of scouting out the charge here, so that's about to expire. And they also just put a sentry ward down. This fresh ward from ATN should be countered out pretty soon here. So they're kind of going to be in the dark for the remaining of the night time, and that's troublesome when you have this global strategy going on right now. Bulldog is massively outleveling and decently outfarming Nisha. The two offlaners, there's, they're worlds apart, honestly. Bulldog has got his face boots, he's closing on level 6. While the Tusk, he's scouted out every step he makes. And it looks like they're gonna try and go in on him. The TP comes in from Bulldog and Nisha in a ton of trouble. Stunned up, Cold Feet the Snowball will actually try and get him out of this, but he's already trapped with Loader there. Rocket Barrage is thrown. And once again, like we said, with Bulldog's Nature's Prophet, early aggression, he's everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Yep. They're just completely outplaying ATN right now. And sure, you might be pressuring this top lane, but you're just an Ursa and a Wyvern. What are you doing here? Whereas they can get pressure on the mid lane as well as the bottom lane. They're going to take mid. There's no Fortify. I mean, Robert G9 has to be careful too. If S4 had just come up and stun him. Potentially could have been dead. And bottom lane at the same time. And exactly like you were saying, there's one tower here from ATN. And you're looking at a two or three trade-off. Two in this case for a line. Mid lane, here they go. The Spirit Breaker mid. Oh. There's Cold Feet for the stun. S4 gets it in the end. And that should proc the Cold Feet to give them enough time to kill the lonely little mad cow. As bottom lane tower drops at long last. The team alternate. One kill on the board, six deaths. Yeah, like you said, they're just not getting enough out of their, their Tusk in the offlane. He's just not doing enough, he's not getting enough levels, and they're just getting confined into the side of the map, and that's really good. I really love Alliance's strategy at this. We have an Ursa who wants to take control of the map, but what are they doing? They're taking away all the control, so he can't really have an easy time in the Roche. Maybe it would have been better for him to smoke up early, go for that easy, you know, like you said, once he gets level 3, 4, go into that Roche pit with the Morbid Mask, but instead, it's kind of easy to see that movement yeah. because he will not be farming in the top lane, but they still didn't get any kills on Admiral Bulldog in the top lane, and going for this aggressive phase boots build is uh, not paying off so far.
It's super obvious. It's kind of like the old Nick's off lane, right? When he uh, when he gets six and disappears off lane, where's he gone? Huh? He's he's ganking mid or something. But there are stacks here for Exotic Deer. He's got a decent chunk of change to collect. If only that camp had stacked up again. Do you think it's going to be the mech from him? Even with the RK Ancient Apparition getting closer to level six. Yeah, that's ATN's lineup. They just have to constantly fight. Oh man, the snowball is going to drag. No, it doesn't pick up the Earth. They still get the kill. The call down though. On to three and Loader living up to that tag in his name. An absolute monster ultimate from him. The Ursa. You could see his intentions, but it just wasn't there. He couldn't get into the fight. Yeah, it was just, you're trying to fight without your Wyvern ulti. You know there's a Gyrocopter down there. You do not have as much AoE as they do. They didn't even have the Shadow Fiend there. He was farming up in the jungle. I mean, he couldn't even TP it if he wanted to. So taking that team fight there without any vision up on the high ground is, that's a no-go. That's how you lose games in, you know, 10 minutes. 15 minutes where the enemy team just can keep snowballing. RK has, uh, has a reasonable amount of farm on this AA, honestly. He's 3-1-3 and three, and an exceptional job so far. Arcane's urn. I wonder what he goes into next. We have seen a lot of differing opinions on Ancient Apparition builds. You know, the uh, the golden days of the Midas into Ags, I feel, are somewhat gone. And now we see a lot more utility. The, the Ghost Scepter's four staffs. Solo likes his Arcane's mech. But what do you think RK goes into next? The Glimmer Cape would be honestly amazing for them. Maybe a Ghost Scepter because he's about to get hunted down and probably killed. Oh, missed he it. This is on the Earth Shock, but RK turns to fight. The Cold Feet might proc here. No, he gets himself away, but S4 joins in with Bulldog and Supreme trapped in the trees. He doesn't even have a Quelling Blade, especially when you're going against a Nature's Prophet. That's really weird to see, even if you're the Ursa here. I don't know. Oh, really need to have that. How do they get back into the swing of things here? Because Bulldog, his mech is nearly done. And this is going to give Alliance a lot of the sustain they really require. S4 is tanky as all hell with close to 1400 HP. And they want a tier 1 at bottom lane it looks like. Exotic Deer is very low on the mana pool though. If they want to take a skirmish, if Alliance actually come to get retribution for this tier 1 push, I think they could get a sweep. I mean, they don't even have vision. They just have defensive wards all around the map. Looking at two runes, that's not really good warding coming out. But they are scouting out Robert G9. And we'll scout out S4 there. How much longer does he have on his dragon form? So they do not have dragon form. Maybe that's that's why they feel like they could take this tier 1 tower bottom. Realizing that S4 already used it. Charge in. Who are they looking for? Trying to get loader, but oh, the Spirit Break is not level 6 yet. Supreme was smoked. It has his blink, but you look at Arke. He's level 6. He's got that Ice Blast ready. Kabap has a Death Ward as well. And these big ultimates are ready for the Radiant Squad. Whereas Spirit Breaker and Wyvern still waiting on that really key. I mean, you're oh. talking about them too. Look at the offlane Nisha. He doesn't even have 6 either. They're just... Here, Mud Golems, please give me level 6. I'm really surprised the Wyvern didn't stay around. But now he just went mid lane. So there we go. Elisash will have his 6 finally. And Tusk is nearly there, Spirit Breaker is a little bit further away, and this this is a Spirit Breaker who was level 3, like three and a half minutes in. He, he had an exceptional start, and a really good go of things, as Supreme is spotted! S4 will cancel his blink actually there. But won't continue to play aggressively as the self comes through, and S4 is charged up. Team alternate. All grouping up around this Dragon Knight, but he's got the drums popped, and there they go in with Bulldog TPing in. There's the mech available. Oh, there's the Wrath coming out as well as S4 turns to fight. He's pretty healthy, and in comes Loader as well. Call down and Ice Blast oh, landing onto everybody. Him. Team Ultimate getting shredded. They're going to lose every single hero bar the Tusk, who's on the retreat out. Time to run and hide as the Shadow Fiend pops himself and Nisha. Poor little Nisha. Is there a stun? Is there anything to stop him? You know what? There's enough damage from Alliance to cancel out that TP. That's just, you know, <laughs> you can, like we saw before, Loda just coming in at the right team fight moments and just putting the nail in the coffin right there. It's just too easy for them. That was a nice curse, but they do not have enough DPS, AoE DPS to really comp er, compensate. They just have a lot of physical DPS and when you, when you get so far behind, in the early on stages, it's just so hard for them right now for ATN, but that's just what their lineup is built around. You either take Roche or you keep fighting, and I, I guess just, they could also go for split pickoffs, but not with Spirit Breaker being so low level, as you said. Well, Loader 6k net worth. We're almost looking at a level 11 DK as well. That's uh, that level 2 dragon form. Is the Ice Blast coming up from RK? 
Now these these two ultimates really key here for Alliance in taking these fights. I just want to go back to that though, because S4 got charged, it looks like no, it looked like he was in a difficult situation, right? But Bulldog just TPs in with that 12 minute mech, make sure he's healthy, make sure he's fine. And what do you think he's going for next, actually, on this Ninja's Prophet? Because the Gloves of Haste has been picked up. Is that a Midas to fall back on? Or a Maelstrom to push forward with? I wouldn't mind the Midas too much, just because he's saying, alright, well, I can just... Maybe I'll need these levels. I'm already kind of a little bit level deprived since I am going for the support build. If the game does last for, you know, 15 more minutes, then he can potentially have one and a half items to two. Yeah. So it's, it's not a bad thing just to go back for. Well, they try Roche, but it's just not happening. The Ursa without lifesteal, it, it just can't be done, really, unless he has the entirety of his team in. And with Ake throwing out these Ice Blasts, they knew something was up. And the Ursa blinks over to the high ground, they've spotted him out, and they're actually going to try and go for this. Bulldog is very quick on his feet with the phase boots, but won't see him just yet. Supreme is farming the enemy jungle, just trying to get every ounce of efficiency he can across the map. But the rest of his team are so passive, the Shadow Fiend. He's got some catching up to do. Yeah, only level 9 during that last team fight. Now he's working his way up to level 11. Finally, his Requiem can do somewhat of a damage, but he doesn't really have like a Blink Dagger to get in after the Wyvern uses his ulti, so I'm trying to figure out how much synergy they're going to really have. Hopefully, Alliance plays it a little bit too aggressive, and then they get burned, but it's, it's not looking that way so far. Maybe once the BKB is up on Exotic Deer, they can make some big plays. Speaking of blinks, we've seen S4 get you know, a little bit close to missing out on his stuns a couple of times, but now they've smoked up. Blink is on the Dragon Knight. How do you feel about this over something like, you know, the Shadow Blade, the BKB? Oh, okay. Holy crap! The snipe from RK apparently finds the Ursa as he was re retreating back to base. Yeah, this ward just was scouting out him doing the Ancients, and then he just went back. Easy calculation from RK, and then... Oh, yeah. The T tours is real. Link dagger onto Robert G9 could be the play. Whoopsie. There we go. Kabap is ready and waiting. They see every movement that ATN's making here. Robert G9, Exotic Deer, and tons of trouble. That blink from S4 should make this a very, very simple kill. And Spirit Breaker, nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Five people from Alliance. They just come out of the walls. They appear from nowhere. Three smoke up, two more TP in. An Eldest Ash. Overestimating how much he can do at this middle lane. Looks like Loader will clear that one up with the Rocket Barrage. See, that's just showing you the inexperience of the the team ATN here. Top lane, if you if that Spirit Breaker... Oh, the Courier. Courier's oh. AFK. That's f oh, no, he'd already used his Blink. It's just showing you, like, going back to the Spirit Breaker, if he had immediately charged S4, then he could have gotten away on Exotic Deer with the Haste Rune. But since he didn't do it immediately your SF goes down. So that's just inexperience coming into play here. And just maybe a little bit, you know, frightened or just caught off guard. But you cannot be caught off guard when you're trying to beat Alliance here. They're looking like they're ready to play today. Oh, Bulldog hits that level 11 mark. Hang on a second. Four, seven, nine, ten. Am I missing something here? Is, yeah, never mind. He was, he was holding the point. He just didn't level up ultimate. Worried there for a second. I mean, two points in Sprout, the value. <laughs> Extra 75 range. So good. So good, so true. Well, Nisha, he's level 7, he's still trying to get into that mech that his team desperately requires, and Kabap is on a dewarding mission. How many wards do we have up for the Dire, actually? There's one watching for that crossing between uh, Western Jungle and Eastern Jungle for the Radiant. And Bulldog says, you know what? I can, uh, I can go back to farming a little bit here. There's no need to be pushing across the river too aggressively as S4. He can do that with impunity. 1400 health. I guess next up for him is going to be something like a BKB. Or do you go back for like an S and Y or a, or a Shadow Blade or something? Yeah, I was I was thinking about what he could go for. BKB is really good just so he doesn't take the Requiem damage. And that's like the only thing I can feel that can kill him in this game. Maybe the Ursa getting on top of you. So maybe you just want to go for that AC first. Oh, yeah. So just so you can get all that, the uh, the physical armor there just for the Ursa, as well as some of it negating the, the Shadow Fiend's presence of the Dark Lord. But this is, uh, or the Necromastery. <laughs> Looks like the SF's had enough of that bloody armor from the Dragon Knight. Shadow Blade and Ogre Club. I thought it was going to be BKB Rush from him. Just the fact that dealing with all the magic damage from Alliance has been awfully difficult. 
But a silver edge wouldn't be wouldn't be out of the question. I don't feel for exotic deer. Yeah, it's it's, look, it's kind of weird looking at him going for the shadow blade. He, he probably feels like I need some way to initiate. Maybe it would have been better to go for like the blink BKB mm -hmm. instead, just so you can wind up that ulti. Sure, you're not going to do as much damage because the the wyvern ulti it's a mitigated for all the heroes. But if you could blow up like Loda oh. in the team fight, then you have a chance to win. Because I mean, Loda's just been the you know the rock that comes in. Team's immediately dead afterwards, so they really need to find a way to kill off him immediately. And now that he's almost has his BKB, oh man, it's uh, looking very grim. Yeah, I guess you could also combo it up with things like Spirit Breaker Charge, Tusk Snowball, and you get that initiation. You blink forward Requiem, and like you said, really try and get the numbers advantage as quickly as you can. Loader, 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 loader. It's been a while since I've seen this build, honestly. We've seen a ton of like phase Helm of the Dominator, lots of Aquila drums, people going S and Y. You know, the Sanj first has become the mainstay of Gyrocopters recently. But the BKB here makes him close to invulnerable. Again, same story with the Dragon Knight. The Requiem is one of the few things that can really do enough actual damage to Loader to finish him off for now, with Roshan being attempted by Alliance. The one thing that Team Alternate would have loved to have in their pockets is that Aegis on the Ursa. And it doesn't look like they'll have it, as they split push 3 top, 2 mid, eking out any kind of damage they can on these towers. Yeah, you saw Ake okay, kind of going in for the, the point booster value arm, value HP, and then he went back for the Ghost Scepter. This is what I was talking about earlier. You need to have this because Ursa's going to be going hunting. Ursa realizes he can't kill any of these heroes on the front line. He's just going to have to hunt Ake okay or something, and he can't even kill him now. So. This is looking really good for Alliance. I'm, I don't understand how they're going to kill any of their heroes. Supreme has just blinked onto this tier 1. And yeah, in come Alliance, in force, they know what's up. The pings come out saying, you know, maybe Bulldog, you TP up here. They're actually moving up onto the high ground near the Ancients. As Alliance, they've grouped up and smoked after the Roche. The high ground vision, Ellis Ash will spot them first. Curse, Loader, he's caught, but there's no damage output. Nisha snowballs into his own death with a punch. Less of a celebration than uh, the death throes of that poor little tusk. <laughs> they really wanted to make a play on the top lane, but then all of a sudden Loda comes up on the high ground. It was really good. They weren't on the same page once again. The Wyvern just cast his ulti instead. They could have just blinked away. You saw the Ursa like, hey, no, 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 we don't want to fight because he Get has the, the Aegis. Out. He has an Aegis. Else they maybe could have blew him up, but even so then Bulldog just TPs in with his mech and I don't even think it would have happened, so... And what we're looking at now, Loda with close to 20 armor, 1500 health, and the lifesteal on top of that. Not even counting the BKB he has, Lissash, oh boy! Diving behind tier 2 here, Alliance! Now he's got his number. Just about saw that as uh, the, <laughs> the converging pastel colors of Alliance's Radiant team. Yeah, you you want to pull the creep wave off, but not when there's a there's a blink dagger on your dragon. Yeah. You, you just can't do that. 3,000 gold saved up to him. He pops the dragon form. It was an easy tier one. Is it honestly high ground time? 22 minutes in for Alliance here. It looks like it looks this like game it. is going to be closed out pretty shortly here. Well, they did get a trade off on the bottom lane. At least that's good, but they still do not have a BKB on Exotic Deer. I don't even know how they fight without him having magic immunity against S4's Blink Dagger. And there's no trades they can have, because Alliance, they're grouping up as five, Team Alternate, they, they kind of have to walk into this one, or jump into this one. And it's definitely the deep end, as Loder just stands his ground, pummels away at the barracks, and does lose a little bit of HP, but look at this, Urn, Voodoo Restoration, and plenty of regen to throw around onto Loder's Gyrocopter. And even the Splinter Blast isn't enough. Nisha spamming out shards. There's the curse. Gonna catch them in Supreme Hunts. I'll keep the Ghost Scepters up. And there's no way of taking him down. They're doing a good amount of damage onto S4. And they get a couple of heroes. Key pickoffs for alternate there. But a buyback from SF and Tusk. Necessary to defend your high ground as Loda. Aegis. Still available. And very difficult to kill with his BKB up as well. If they had a Blink Dagger on SF, they would have team wiped potentially Alliance. Oh my goodness, at least make it so that Alliance, or Loda respawns. Oh, Loda dodges the last shards as well and doesn't even lose the Aegis. They're so far behind, but yet, yeah, this is, this is pretty much... Uh, that was like their best opportunity there too. They lined up everything per perfectly, the charge in, the Tusk snowball in. Exotic Deer didn't get off his Requiem, and that pretty much sealed their fate, and... Bulldog has the item. He has the, the ultimate scepter, item, the ultimate nature's profit item. All he needs now is Octarine Refresher. 
And then we're going to have these big old treants running around and destroying buildings. Hang on a second. Su Supreme's got himself a Sanj. I feel like Alliance are just going to get mega creeps and just go back into their base and... AFK? And then AFK. Just gonna... I've got that feeling as well. They're, really. they're gonna... <laughs> it's all about the mind games now. The mind well, games. That's what I was saying to Toby earlier, you know. I, I see them doing very well against Liquid if they can have uh, a very good series here against Alternate. And then, you know, Toby replied with if, if they outdraft, if they know that they've got a very crisp, clear advantage and they can execute very well. Which they have done, honestly. Team Alternate, from the get-go, have had limited chances and opportunities against Alliance's draft and their actual movement across the map. Yeah, it's not been as crisp, that's to say the least. But uh, some of the items that could help is the Shadow Fiend's BKB. Looking at the Urso, though, played by Supreme, he he went for a Sange, though. I mean, you can't yeah. have a Sange. You have to have a BKB. You have like there's just too much magical damage, and then the stuns coming in from S4. Ah, how how do you feel about Mask of Manus Ursa? Because we've seen that uh, I've seen it a lot in my in my pub games, and I'm sure uh, I've seen people like Cheshire Cat pick it up as well. Because with your ulti comboed up with your Mask of Manus, you, know, you get the attack speed. And you, you don't deal. take that much damage. Yeah. Right, it's, it's great synergy, but once that your ulti does wear off, then you're, you're, you're pretty much screwed. Oh, DK jumps in, Lissash. Caught again, but the BKB from S4 is there. They're going to try and fight into this, but with Loaded is standing his ground. The cooldown will land onto all five and Kabat. Death Ward Supreme shredded under the physical damage. It looks like... Alternate are on their last legs as the uh, Winter's Curse is thrown out onto Loda. It's all over though. They've got nothing left to give and GG is called. Game number one goes the way of Alliance. Convincing fashion, but nothing too surprising there. Alternate gave it a good showing, but the Ursa just never worked out. I think <laughs> <laughs> they drafted him. Uh, yeah, they had. We're out of the game.